It's an explosive conclusion to the Doctor's New York story. But going out on a high wasn't easy. Join Confidential as we strip the Big Apple to its core and show you how the Doctor Who team made Manhattan. It's hard to do 1930s New York in Cardiff, let's be honest. The big challenge of the episode was making it feel authentic and making it feel like New York. So obviously, to go over there and shoot plate shots and, and be able to blend the real New York with the bits of Cardiff, it makes that episode just feel that bit more epic. It's actually easier to go and get a shot of the real city where the shape of the city and the grids and the angles you need to see it from actually exists and then paint that picture to look like the 1930s. So we ended up sending an effects crew and the director, James Strong, and Confidential, over to New York, where they got the right angles. They just got beautiful, clean shots of the Statue of Liberty, shots of Central Park, that sort of stuff. It's like Doctor Who in New York in 1930. Brilliant. It's ambitious to set a story in New York. It's, it's deliberately ambitious, and I didn't know how far we could go um, but again, with this design team and with this effects team, you set something rolling and off they go when they grab it and they run with it. Travelling stateside, the Doctor Who production team are in Manhattan to marvel at the New York skyline. Certain that if they can make it there, they can make it anywhere. We come to Central Park, which is kind of where we're saying, well, where Hooverville was based at the time, and so we've mm. obviously it's not here anymore. So we've had to shoot plates of, of Central Park and buildings. If you look around the kind of period buildings, a lot of which haven't changed since the 30s, mm. and we're going to construct a kind of collage, if you like. Essentially, we're painting out the modern buildings and leaving the 30s buildings, and then adding the Empire State Building into the shot. The most important thing about today is it's kind of getting the buildings coming up out of the trees, so we've got to be quite specific about which place, yeah. places we pick to film our plate shots today. We want the trees so that we can kind of cut around them and put the Cardiff trees in, essentially. Some of the foreground buildings are a, a period, so we'll, yeah. we'll cut those out along with the tree line. And, can, and, and you can do that, what, because they're straight lines, so you can eat quite easily yeah, cut yeah, them out? Yeah, they're very easy to kind of cut, cut out okay. paste okay. into a... I mean, again, we'll use the tree line. Wherever we film, we're going to film in Cardiff in a park. We'll paint these trees and, the, yeah. and these uh, period buildings in. Behind me is the beautiful sheep meadow of Central Park. So actually we'll have all of our action taking place and the Doctor and Martha walking through and it'll look like it's part of this massive landscape behind us. This is Central Park in Cardiff. It's not actually Hooverville, which is, um, well, which is further around the corner. This is where we're filming the scene where uh, the Doctor and Martha are heading for Hooverville because they know something's up and they know that the first place they should go looking is uh, Hooverville in Central Park. And action! Herbert Hoover. 31st president of the USA came to Barry a year ago. Up till then, New York was a boom town, the roaring 20s, and then... The Wall Street crash, yeah. When was that? 1929? Yeah. Whole economy wiped out overnight. Thousands of people unemployed. All of a sudden, the huddled masses doubled in number with nowhere to go. So, they ended up here in Central Park. What, they actually live in the park? In the middle of the city? And it's there, OK? Big cut. Big Comparing the scale of Cardiff and New York, is this just ridiculously ambitious? Um, because New York's fantastic and it was brilliant being there and seeing all those different places. But at the same time, you think, ooh, that's quite a big job to kind of recreate actually any of that, let alone all of those different locations. Well, this is one of the uh, opening shots for uh, episode four. So we start out by getting rid of whatever elements we can using the 
original plate, clean it up a little bit. Um, that's a view over Central Park, so we uh, went out and shot some trees as reference for that. And uh, there we are, some trees dropped in over the top to uh, cut out most of the uh, buildings that you can see there. We need to start adding in some uh, buildings from the 1930s, which uh, Dave uh, shot as reference when he was out there uh, from the top of the Empire State Building. So we've got some 1930s style buildings which we colour grade and uh, correct perspectives so that they now match in with uh, the angle that's shot for the original plant. Final stages is just to uh, really add in a little bit of fog to sit that into the uh, live action a little bit better. There we go, that's how that shot now appears in the show. And doubling as Central Park is, of course, Central Cardiff. Deep within these woods, Confidential welcomes you along to Wales's very own Hooverville. The set of Hooverville was a very exciting one to come across because it was literally built in the middle of Butte Park in Cardiff. And you, you couldn't quite see it. Uh, and as you approached, it suddenly kind of loomed through the, through the clearing. So it felt fantastically real. Finding a location in the middle of Cardiff that gave us a nice wooded area surrounded enough by trees so that we could, was the right scale for us to, to be able to create what we, what we could afford for our budget was, was quite a challenge. I did feel a bit like the gods were smiling on us just because the weather is almost exactly the same as it was in Central Park. It's kind of cold and clear and beautiful and exactly what it needs to be for everything to kind of match up. We built a Hooverville. And the mill have added to that and added smoke coming out the chimneys and things like that so Hooverville looks as big as it really was. There are places like this all over America. No one's helping them. You only come to Hooverville when there's nowhere else to go. It felt fantastically real because it existed on every side of you. We didn't have to shoot at any particular angle. It, it existed all around 360 degrees and, and it was, it was um, brilliantly created. Wonderful set with you know, all the little detail, all the little long dongs hanging up along the washing lines and the lovely fire in the middle. And it had a real nice feel of community. It really did feel like home. We had all sorts of dressing. We had sort of mangles. We had bonfires, we had oil drums, paraffin lamps. We created a toilet hut. And it was extensive as well. There were all different kind of little streets you could go down and, and different bits to it and, and, and all these different dwellings. There was something about Hooverville, something about the kind of the verity of it that, that you could imagine living within it. I think it was probably one of the most effective sets we've done. I hope that translates onto the screen. Back across the pond, the production team spend a few hours in the company of a very special lady. But the doctor and his companion won't be afforded such liberties, because David and Freema will be admiring this view without ever leaving Wales. Because we only have a limited number of special effects shots, we have had to find a piece of uh, wall um, up in Cardiff which matches the base of the statue. We'll film David and Freema against green screens and then put them in and when we finished it'll look like the TARDIS really has landed here. It's going to work, Dave, isn't it? Tell me it'll work. <laughs> We're going to put the TARDIS right away in the middle of the lawn in Cardiff and then it's going to be magically put here in front of the Statue of Liberty. Door will open. The Doctor and Martha will step out. Where are we? Ah! Smell that Atlantic breeze! The doctor says look up. Have you met my friend? You see the Statue of Liberty? Oh my God, that's the Statue of Liberty. Gateway to the New World. And we cut to our big, big one of these wides. They chat. And the Doctor walk out of frame and walk over to here, which is the big map painting of the harbour. It was New Amsterdam originally. Hard to say twice. With the Empire State Building right in the middle. Because look, the Empire State Building's not even finished yet. Work in progress. Manhattan's over there, the most beautiful view on a really gorgeous sunny day. I am sitting here thinking, how are we going to match this in Cardiff in November? But hey, we need a lot of luck. Okay, how's it going? Yeah, 
But luck was on their side, in a small town called Penarth. And the Welsh weather is perfect. We're a month later now, it's a month since we shot those plate shots in New York, and the weather is exactly the same today as it was that day. It's kind of gobsmacking because it's been raining for two weeks here. This is actually a fantastic match for the base of the Statue of Liberty. The brick on the wall here is, is almost identical. We looked at every piece of wall and brick in Cardiff, really, to find this. Um, and then there's the grass in front, and so when we jump back and, and, and paste this into, um, into the real plate shots of the Statue of Liberty, it's going to be a fantastically easy match. And action! Anywhere else in the universe, I won't worry about them, but New York... That's what this city's good at. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, and maybe the old pig slave Dalek mutant hybrid, too. <laughs> The pig and the showgirl. The pig and the showgirl. <laughs> Just proves it, I suppose. There's someone for everyone. There's a bit of ill feeling around this morning because everybody's, everybody's really annoyed that we got to go to the real place. And here they are in Cardiff, uh, trying to recreate the magic of New York. Sorry, sorry, can I just point out our lovely producer Phil and our director James <laughs> and our visual effects man Dave and some of the, the Doctor Who Confidential crew all got a nice weekend in Manhattan. <laughs> we are in a car park in the Leisure Centre. Draw your own conclusion. <laughs> I'm ashamed. And a local dog just weaved on the TARDIS. <laughs> To make matters worse, we've got a mix and overlay monitor with all our plate shots of the real Statue of Liberty. We put our actors against green screen and then we put the real view behind it, so it looks like they're really standing and looking out over Manhattan. All the stuff we shot with David and Freema today will match exactly what we shot in New York, so it couldn't be better, it couldn't be more perfect, it's, it's brilliant. Cut there. It's the city that never sleeps. And the Doctor Who production team are not getting much rest themselves. Before sunrise, they've travelled up 86 floors to film high above Manhattan, from the top of the iconic Empire State Building. top of the Empire State Building, or, or the 86th floor. It's very cold up here, and we're, uh, we're taking plate shots of the, of, of the new New York skyline and landscape to put into our shots of uh, Manhattan. We'll have Manhattan, the Bronx and Staten Island too. We'll be painting it up to make it look sort of more 1930s. So, so views like the one I'm looking at at the moment of uh, the Chrysler Building, fantastic, because they could give, give us lots of period uh, detail. We'll turn Manhattan into an Isle of Joy. Like when we came up here at 5.30, no one else here, it was dark, so we took shots of, of Manhattan at night, um, which was incredible. We've got a, a variety of different shots of New York from above with a variety of different lighting conditions and as our episode takes place there are, sh there are shots up here set during the day and there are shots um, set at night we can pick and choose our background and we can also kind of paint up our nighttime shots to add some more detail from the, from the daytime shots. <laughs> it's just the most breathtaking view I've ever seen. It's amazing. And standing at nearly one and a half thousand feet, the Empire State Building took seven million man-hours to build. At its peak, there were 3,000 of these men at work at one time, all risking their lives at these death-defying heights. The old pictures give us great reference. There are 
quite a few period buildings that you recognise from some of the photos I've been looking at, so I know which ones to cunt out and which ones to leave in. Referring back to those uh, old photographs of, of workmen in the 1930s building, the, uh, the Empire State Building kind of sitting on girders suspended above New York, will be kind of replicating that kind of, those kind of shots in some of the, some of the shots on the, this, these episodes. Up there, on a clear day, these men could see for over 80 miles. Out on girders and exposed to the cruel conditions, the workers would have no idea that one day, the eighth wonder of the world would be visited by nearly four million visitors a year. What coming to New York's given us is just as many options as possible, so we, when we get back, we can design our map paintings to fit what the locations we've got back in Cardiff are rather than the other way around. So we've had to kind of shoot probably more plates than we would normally. We've actually shot the Empire State Building from a couple of different locations, really. We've done it from on the top of the Empire State Building, which is kind of all the views when you're on it. So when our workmen are sat on the girders, when our people are in the office looking out, We've shot them for real from the top of the Empire State Building. Our store is set, it's still being built. So we've done shots of it, obviously, now, today. Then they will add on all the scaffolding and, and, and to make it look like it's still being built. So we've done it from here, this bar, to, which is just kind of across the street from the Empire State Building, which is an amazing view of it. Then we've done it from various locations on the street, if you like, in Manhattan. So wherever we are, whichever matte map painting it is, we can put it put in the real Empire State Building and then modify it, but it will fit all the different locations and our places in the story where we see it from, whether that's Hooverville, whether it's the Statue of Liberty, where the TARDIS first arrives. All those different places, we've had to find different shots of the Empire State Building to kind of fit in to that. number of plate shots from this this location we'll pretty much use the landscape and kind of see behind me and paint out the the, the things that aren't, aren't period there's a load of buildings that look period even if they're not and they've got you know they're covered in these old water towers you know they're really saying New York which which is fantastic we'll just remove the huge building over here with now renting written on top of it and uh, various other buildings and replace them with kind of older older buildings. You can see the Chrysler building from here as well, which uh, is a bonus because it's period as well and it, it, you know, it's a beautiful building so we kind of try and get that into our shots of the Empire State building so we've got a lovely lovely Manhattan skyline. And across the Atlantic the mill prepare to make these modern day postcards picture perfect. This is actually a digital still that uh, Dave shot from the top of the Empire State Building. Uh, obviously, many, many buildings that shouldn't be there. So you can see the original here. That's what the, uh, the original photo that we shot. And we used all those extra elements to just patch over the buildings that shouldn't be there. Now, this uh, was actually used uh, several times as time is passing. So that's our uh, shot that we had uh, taken at dusk, uh, which we then um, colour correct to get it to look much later on in the evening. So we take out all the colour from the skies, take out all the lighting. Uh, then we need to just start switching on a few lights, uh, which we do here like that. Uh, so they're all like painted in from uh, some photographs that Dave took of uh, the, the nighttime uh, view over the Empire State Building. So we just cut out the lights and position them where we want them to go. And then we end up with a, a, a nighttime view of the, the same scene. What's going to be amazing is when we can get back into the green screen studio in Cardiff and we'll have our guys sat on our plank and they'll be sat there and they'll be putting these amazing shots that we're getting today on, on their background. So the backgrounds will be real and they'll be real and put them together. It's just going to be brilliant. This bit, yeah, this bit, it's uh, just as I would. 
The majestic Manhattan backdrops have been filmed, treated, and are ready to use. All that's required for the finishing touches are a couple of guys, one large girder, and an even larger green screen studio. And, and hoist it, hoist it up. Today we're shooting elements for our, our classic uh, view of the construction of the Empire State Building. Looking at some workers on a, on a girder with nothing but New York and thousands of feet below them. I think what we're you doing is you can lower this and, David, if you kind of wait for it and then grab it as it comes and you, you carry on lowering it and you kind of get down on your knees and pretend to attach it to something. In terms of the atmosphere, it's, it's not like being you know, exposed at the, you know, a great height. Um, the wind and... Yeah, we've got a wind machine. So we're just putting some wind machine effects on them to, to make it feel like they're, you know, they're, they're up, up in the sky and exposed to you know, the wind. Bend your legs a little bit well, like... In New York, we filmed the background elements overlooking Manhattan. This element that we're filming now will key into the foreground, so we'll key off the green screen and put in the backgrounds. It's a relatively straightforward process. We've just got to make sure that the lighting is, is right, so it matches the lighting of the place that we filmed already. OK, here we go then, and action! OK, great. OK, cut it. Cut it! There's in there somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. The office location that a lot of the action takes place in uh, is set at the top of the building just before the antenna and the tower below it. And here, the crowning glory of the Empire State Building, the mast itself, 1,472 feet above New York. It's a beautiful thing, sir. The Empire State Building was great for us because it, it was a set that allowed us to, to have two elements to it. There was a, a, an almost completed element, which was all sort of marble and, and deco, and then as you moved through the room, it got more towards the facade of the building, which was still being built. Um, so we were able to design the both elements into the set um, with a nice big sort of deco light box in the roof. So the ceiling just ran the whole length of it. It, was, it had a very big ceiling piece to it. It was just really to make it feel quite letterboxy and quite low. I think Ed's done a brilliant job on that, on that Empire State set because it's got, it's got the, the glamour. And I love its, its open end, that the, it's half finished, that you've got sky and there are chains and, and girders that are still exposed. There's a whole theme of things being a bit rotten underneath. And I think you get that on that set brilliantly. What's the time? Uh, 11.15. Six minutes to go. I've got to remove the data canyon before the gamma radiation hit. Gamma radiation? What the heck is that? The other element of the set was the actual exterior of the building. Oh, that's high. That's very blimey, that's high. And we've got to go even higher. That's the mast up there, look. And we were able to then recreate that element down in the docks in Cardiff at, at our usual haunt, the heliport, where, where we have infinity in the skyline, basically. This heliport in Cardiff just allows us distant horizons, so you can, you can shoot off and make it look like you're, you're high up in the sky, really, which is why we went back there. Well, the doctor steps out and he steps onto a girder. We can actually follow him on his journey right up the building because we'd have done the plate shots here. It was the middle of the night, of course, so it was even colder and the rain lashed down and the wind was ferocious that night. But you need it for that sequence. You need to feel like the Doctor is in the middle of nowhere. It's bleak. And it was pretty bleak. So again, you know, that helps, helps the old imaginative leap. The 
mass that the heliport was, it was a huge number for us. It was a big build. It was a six metre tall structure, steel fabricated, all, all built in house, uh, and then clad in, in plywood and made to look like RSJs. Doctor! Doctor! Look what we found. Halfway down. You're getting careless. We had to use some f fairly substantial crane to put it up and, and then obviously create platforms um, which which work as, from a safety point of view as well as work for the action. But it was a, it was a big number. Oh, you survived then. So did you, just about. <laughs> I can't help noticing there's Dalekanium still attached. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> But fans should look out for that structure because it's going to keep coming back. There's something about the Dalek that's a little bit reminiscent of the Empire State Building. There's a flash of the Art Deco about them. I think the Art Deco thing is just, it, it does keep reappearing, you say, with the Cybermen and, and, and the Daleks and, and the whole 1930s. It's a very strong period in history, you know, it's a very decorative period in history. As a designer, it's a great period to draw from. I think Ed Thomas likes a bit of Art Deco here and there, so I think his designs worked peculiarly well in this 20s, 30s setting. Um, and the Daleks do seem to just kind of fit. People have said that the Daleks have tied in very well with the, um, with, with the design of that episode, you know, and, and of course that's, that's the job of the production designer is to make sure that, that all that happens, you know, that, that these, the, all the elements fit together and merge together when you require them to, and also, of course, can be juxtaposed as well when you require them to. The Dalek Transgenic Laboratory, there, there's a sort of great fun to that. It's very Frankenstein. I think this is the year that The Bride of Frankenstein came out. Yeah, the Transgenic Lab was, was obviously the big moment. That was the big set that we had to create for that episode. Start the line feeds. There goes the gene solution. We, we obviously knew from the script that it needed to be in the bowels of the Empire State Building, so we looked for a location that would give us a, the height that we required, um, and, and, and B, the, the size of the building so that we could really get back and get some nice wide shots. For that, we went to a power station, um, a disused power station, and put that lab into it, really. It offered us um, a large, pillared, um, underground room, really, um, which feel, you know, you look at that room and there were so many concrete pillars in there, it really does feel like it's supporting a big structure above it. Our sets tend to fall into two categories. Sets that we build from scratch, um, you know, that, that, that carpenters build and, and set decorators paint the walls of and install the electricity into, etc. Or locations that we go to and transform into something, and that's a perfect example of that. Back at Butte Park, home to Hooverville, there's a charged atmosphere for what promises to be a very explosive night ahead. This is called, um, we call it deck cord. It's a high explosive, as an igniter cord. But what we do is we wrap it around petrol, and when it goes off, it just creates a really clean, nice, big fireball. Like any high explosive, this obviously sends a shockwave, and it's very dangerous. Secret special effects is tiny. Uh, this back uh, more off is going to be a big ball of flame. <laughs> All right. Ang angled straight it's up. Just a, no, 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 we're going to build some fire up. Right, okay. Petrol. Right. Firing straight up in the air, two debris pushing towards that, um, that um, camera that's going to be over there. Okay. And over there as well. All right. And as well as that, we've got this um, uh, shed, which is just going to sort of blow outwards. Potentially maybe a fireball behind it as well, timed in, so it looks like the explosion has pushed it forward. The guy is going to be starting from back here. So on action, the guy's going to be running, running, running. Kim and Andy will take their own timing. As soon as the guy's on here, bounces up. Danny, you deck then, yeah? yeah? Camera's on here, the explosion's there, and the Daleks, yeah, up in the, up in the yeah. sky. Right, so yeah. <laughs> Um, and then our stuntman will fly towards us. Yeah. So we'll have yours locked off, obviously. Mm. And then we'll have uh, two other cameras kind of on it. Yeah. Elsewhere, getting the full okay. bang. Okay. 
So later that night, all's calm at Hooverville. But not for long. After many months of planning, building, rigging and decorating this purpose-built set, tonight it's time to blow it up. Let battle begin. It's a big number because you've got special effects combining with stunts, combining with cameras, and they've all got to be going at the right time, so it's, it's a bit nerve-wracking. So you come over from Andrew? Right, the beginning. This is just Andrew, yeah. And turn over. Yeah, that's it. Quite the camera. <laughs> okay, stand by, Danny. Here we go. Here you go, mate. Back on action. And action. Daleks. They sound like the stuff of nightmares. Isn't it? They want to breed. They're splicing themselves onto human bodies. And if I'm right, they've got a farm of breeding stock right here in Hooverville. You've got to get everyone out. Hooverville's the lowest place a man can fall. There's nowhere else to go. I'm sorry, Solomon, but you've got to scatter. Just go anywhere. Get onto the railroads, travel across state, just get out of New York. There's got to be a way to reason with these things. There's not a chance. You ain't seen them, boss. That legs are bad enough at any time, but right now they're vulnerable. That makes them more dangerous than ever. When we've got into the main actors, they're all together and they've all got guns and stuff, and so that's kind of, you know, as we hear them go off, they're really loud. So it's actually getting the actors used to firing the guns properly, and so we can actually do it for real. So as we go for it, they're, they're, these are real guns, and they're really firing. OK, both action rifles. The chamber is empty. Mm -hmm. To hold it, right hand here, left hand here. Mm -hmm. That is ready. Okay. Finger off the trigger. Yep. So the first one is in there. Yep. You can hear it when it's echoing around the whole of this park. So um, it's really loud, but that's really scary. But it's real, which is good. It means the, the reactions are real, so it kind of works. This shed over here, that's going to explode. They're big bangs, all right? No problem. Earplugs, anyone? You're going to give an action I'm, I'm for gonna background, do a background to run, and I'm going to mumble my... And then there'll be a 3 two, one action. This is basically with the Daleks attack Hooverville, so um, it's been a huge... Uh, exercise and logistics to get it all together, to get all the explosions and the stuntmen together, and, and also because it's so expensive to, to, to do this. Guys, just look up at that for me. I'm going to aim it where they put the thing. They're yeah. all looking, basically in the sky. Another one appears, another Dalek appears. So there'll be one to the left, basically that tree, and then one to the right, that other second tree. So who's setting up for this shot? Martin maybe? would be your shot. This is the Barney Dave of the visual effects guys, so when you've got a frame and shirt to... We'll be creating the Dalek on, on the computer and putting that in afterwards. So we have our live action elements and Barney's just supervising the, the final part of the live action so that we, we get all our pieces for the jigsaw puzzle. Dave, for Barney, you're Is it as wide as you can go? No, it isn't. I've got another couple of more. Our Dalek only is going to fly through from the sort of background from where those trees are, mm -hmm. fly down towards us. Fire its little so, no, laser bolt below this thing up and off and over the top. So. I wouldn't think so. Uh, you mean, uh, Mark, you have got a new position for the 6K, please. Special effects when you're set and clear. Yeah, I'm here, Pete. Danny, where are you taking this from? I'm going to be over here. Right. So I'm directly in line. We have two explosions <laughs> twice, and with those four explosions, we have to make it look like there's. That's the whole attack, basically, on Hooverville. So we're going to shoot them both. Those four explosions shoot them with three cameras in different angles and different positions. So hopefully when it all comes together, it'll feel like there's been a dozen different attacks and a dozen different explosions and laser bolts and stuff. The first noise is there. The first noise is here. Did the other noises happen straight after that? Yeah, or, and then or is it after Earl's run in? I think it's after Earl's run, well, it's after Earl's run in. So it's after Earl's run in. Then it starts kicking off. Yeah, then it starts kicking off. So, guys, it's not the noise, the whistling, the alarm bells aren't just coming from the one direction, they're coming from all around you. You've got sentries posted everywhere. Roll cameras. E-camera. E-camera. D-camera. Sentry, must have seen something. They're here! Send them! Monsters! They're monsters! We're under attack! We're under war! We're under attack! We're under war! 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 We're
Now we stand together. Get around, everybody, come to me. Who that Jethro, Harry, Seamus, stay together. The strength in numbers that can't take us all. Gunshots, there's been a little running and screaming and hiding, and you kind of you believe it because all the hysteria and, and it's dark and scary along the edges, so it's not that difficult to imagine that there's actually really something creepy going on. Oh, Martha, they're just the foot soldiers. <laughs> what in this world is the devil? The devil in the sky, God save us all. It's damnation. Oh, yeah, we'll see about that. See That went bang, didn't it? I'm okay, no, happy with that. That looked good. Happy, Very good. Happy, <laughs> Thankfully, the weather's been great, so it's been a clear night, and, and it's gone it's gone all right so far. We've got all of the explosions and stuff out of the way, and it went really well. But sadly, night number two at Hooverville didn't start quite as well. Yeah, like I said last night, um, how lucky we would have been with, with, the, with the weather. And then, um, up to tonight, where it's raining a little heavily. Don't tell me not to live just sitting in Like candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. With the rain finally easing off, it was time for the Daleks to do what they do best. Firing uh, down! Boom! Leave them alone! They've done nothing to you! Luke! Solomon, stay back! 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 I'm told I'm addressing the Daleks, is that so? From what I hear, you're outcast too! Solomon, don't! Doctor, this is my township. Just let me try. Daleks! Ain't we the same? Ain't we kin? Grace, see, I've just discovered this past day that God's universe is a thousand times the size I thought it was. But surely it's got to give me hope. Hope that made me together. We can make a, a better tomorrow. But if his different creations can't find some connection then what hope is there for any of us you just think for a second that with such a beautiful speech and you know it, it delivered so wonderfully you think with the big pause for a second the dalek is just gonna go all right then <laughs> and just come down from the sky let's all be friends if you have any compassion in your hearts that you'll meet with us and start this fight well, what do you say? What do you say? Exterminate! Destroyer of our grave! 
greatest enemy. And do it! Just do it! And dominate! Cut that. Cut that? Cardiff and New York have been on an exchange like no other. And for two episodes, the Doctor Who team have faced extraordinary challenges bringing the Big Apple to the small screen. I'm incredibly pleased with the way they turn out. I think they do look epic. I think you feel as if you're in New York, and I think you feel as if you're in a world unlike any other that we visited. Just real. You think, my God, they're really there. It's lovely. Really lovely. Visit bbc.co.uk forward slash Doctor Who now to start in your own Doctor Who story by using our new comic maker. The universe is in your hands. Up next tonight, though, Top Gear.